Oh, I got my cigar boogie on there. Ah, good morning, everybody on the book. You are listening to the pre-pre-show of Local Biz Now. We thank you for tuning in. Call your mama, call your sister. I mean, I should call my mama and my sister. Tell them we're getting ready to start the show so they can get ready. Uh, Carolyn is here again. Woohoo! Carolyn, we got a big time show. Today. Yes, we do. Hey, I'm getting a little uh, like echo. I know. What's this? Is it? Is it? The is that better? Testing, testing. Go ahead. Might be a little loud. Can you lower my my headset? Yeah, it's kind of loud. Lower it down here. Uh. Is that loud or low? is that you? Not, now you went too far. Pull mine back up a little bit. That's good. Is that good? Is that good for you? Yeah. It, okay. Good. Good. Are, are you are you okay, Chuck? I'm good. Okay. We're Actually, right. I'm gonna adjust. How come, how come you didn't ask me if I'm okay? Well, because <laughs> that's just my job. I don't ask Chuck. <laughs> we already know you are. <laughs> <laughs> so we had Chuck Cooper drive all the way from another world, <laughs> Valentine. <laughs> To be with us today, Carolyn, and um, he looks like he's headed for the door. He 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 said, "I think I just yes. wasted my morning driving up here." Well, Lucia, he left you the book. <laughs> <laughs> Chuck, I'm trying to find the chapter where you make fun of old people. <laughs> And I cannot for the life of me. He knows the page. Yeah. It's the part of the book where old people can't Get. find the chapter. It's <laughs> that part of the book. Uh, no, I think what you're looking for, I think you're looking for the uh, chapter on generations, and I think that is, it starts on page 41. 40, oh, he even knows the... the of course, the he wrote one. the book. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I wrote the book, but I can't remember. Well, I didn't write my book. I dictated my book. Might be a better description on that yeah so isaiah so you and i got a big day tomorrow big do. big big day huge day we're gonna try something new we're gonna create a holiday show that's gonna air it's probably gonna air about 15 times on the on the station isn't that about right look i, I don't know what kind of i don't know <laughs> I, I don't know what you're saying is if it's no good you're not gonna play it at all is that what you're saying I don't have any choice in the matter. We're mm. just going to create something different. We something are. Something new. Sounds mm -hmm. like a solid plan. We, yes. <laughs> yes, we walk in this blindly. I mean, it's a solid plan. Let me put you this way. Um, outside of the owner's discretion <laughs> and request for us not to do it, Isaiah and I are going to put a holiday show together where my son, his girlfriend, Isaiah's children, or at least two of them, are going to be here. I'm going to read holiday poems and stories, and our children are going to make the background noise um, oh, that's hilarious. for the show. Yes. So, so that's what we're going to do tomorrow. Yeah, kind of like an old school radio show. That's right. That's right. With a new school group of children. Yes. We're the... not going to be able to. J just Let me just be clear. I'm just telling you right now, I cannot control what my child does. I, I, now, I, you know, I know he's a senior in college, but uh, I, from middle school on, I haven't been able to control him. So, don't if you want to if you want to stop him, maybe you better bring a whip tomorrow. So, yeah. is this live or recorded? Oh, we're going <laughs> to record it. Yeah, we're going to have to record like, it. Mm. <laughs> we're going to record it so that we can play it all during the holidays. Because there's about four days that the station will be um, closed, so we're going to use this as a holiday show. I can't show. wait. Um, and um, I'm thinking it's either going to be spectacular uh, or a big bomb. A big if bomb. it's spectacular, I take full credit ten responsibility. Seconds, ten seconds. Here we go. If it bombs. It'll be great. see the kind of industries that are opening up. This is Local Biz Now with Joe Vagnone, where your business matters. Local Biz Now. You have to determine what is working, what isn't working. Joe Vagnone is a respected business broker, helping individuals buy and sell businesses. Joe has successfully owned and operated many companies in a variety of industries. This is Local Biz Now. Local Biz Now. Because
Your business matters. And this is Local Biz Now. I am Joe Vagnone. You are listening to the number one talk business show in all of North Carolina. Certainly all of the Vills. I mean from Statesville all the way to Huntersville and all the towns in between. Let me prove to you why we are number one. We've been doing this show for 10 years, going strong. And uh, we have well over 400 videos on my brand new sexy YouTube channel. Um, please go there and subscribe. Subscribe. We now officially have 42 subscribers. We on a roll, Woo-hoo! baby. We on a roll. We we on a roll. Uh, we are also live on Facebook now. Go to the book. You can participate in this conversation. I expect for you to represent yourself and your family and your community well on the book. We got the pastor listening today, so be respectful. This is a family <laughs> show, even though Isaiah is still running the board. Um, <laughs> And we hope that we will inspire, inform, and entertain you for the entire hour. Thank you so much for uh, being a part of this. Because if it's Friday morning, your business matters. So let's get started. My co-host for the entire month is Carolyn Brand. She is the founder of the Carolyn Brand Group, which is HR Reimagined. My delightful and delicious (laughs) and delectable co-host, Carolyn, thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Good morning. So um, we got a great show today, and you you are perfect for this show. You know, Julie has a way of making sure that the guests fit well with the co-host. I was a little concerned about this one. I didn't know if you guys were going to get along or fight, (laughs) but it sounds like you guys are going to get along good. Perfectly. Yeah, because we're going to be talking about HR, um, and uh, we're also going to be talking about, uh, right up your alley, a lot of the uh, stuff that small business people constantly continue to have challenges with. You know, I told you for years I did a a, a small business business advisory group for about 10, 15 small business owners, and the number one thing they continuously had problems with were HR issues. Yes. Uh, it's like never ending. You never seem to actually be able to get it under control. No. You could just sort of manage the Mitigate. problems. <laughs> <laughs> so please remind everybody what the Carolyn Brand Group is all about. Absolutely. Thank you. Uh, so the Carolyn Brand Group provides scalable HR to fast growing companies. So we come in and take a look at all the risk that may be inherent in the business as a company grows. And of course, that risk can grow as uh, as the company size increases, employees are added. And so we provide that strategy to the CEO and the C-level. Uh, we also uh, conduct HR assessments to really understand what's going on inside your business. And that puts uh, the companies on a path, certainly uh, reduces their financial risk and their setup for the future. So when we met, um, one of the things that impressed me about you is your ability to stay on top of all of the changing things that mm-hmm. are happening with HR. You know, it used to be as a small business owner, we had to hire an accountant to do our taxes because we could not possibly keep up with the crazy stuff our government was changing on a daily basis. Mm-hmm. Yet, um, now that's happened with, a, with HR. Yes. I mean, you have to keep up on that. We have to keep up on it. We have a lot of great resources, as uh, as our uh, guests will tell us as well. And uh, we have to stay on top of it. There's too many changes at the federal and state levels. And so uh, it's it's a whole new it's a whole new animal for businesses. So I'm curious, is there a lot of detail that you have to review based on the clients that you have? Or is all of this stuff general? It's general in nature, yet. Each company, just like every individual, you know, they have their own culture. So we need to understand what what it is that they uh, want out of their business and how they want to treat their employees and what their employees are, how they want to be treated as well. So we tailor it to their culture, uh, but apply the same general principles across each organization. What is the number one reason why people come to you? Is there just one? There, well, <laughs> it's usually a number of reasons. Usually they need some kind of serious help. Uh, it's really about strategizing for the future. It's scaling for the future. They know where they want to go. They don't just want a small business. They want to grow to tens of millions, hundreds of millions of dollars. And so they know that coming to us is the right choice. That's interesting. So they have every intention of growing. They do not intend on saying the size they're at. Typically. 
typically. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of my clients, they're kind of comfortable with where they are. That's understandable. Yeah, that's interesting. So so if I'm going to grow my business, I definitely need a professional HR firm to help me get there. Yes, because hiring one full time is a little too expensive, in my opinion. And also, do you really need it? Uh, and uh, there's just too many risks lurking that well, you need to find out about. What I remember now, keep in mind, we going back a few years. Mm -hmm. You know, I got some gray hair, unlike you. <laughs> um, I can remember I woke up one day and realized I had 175 employees. Yes. It, it, it just kind of happened, yes. right? You know? And then I realized I need somebody to field these calls because I, I, I just can't do it. Mm -hmm. And the problem was I had no idea who to hire. Right. I couldn't tell you whether they were good at this or not. So that's the challenge I ran into. And then I would still have to oversee to make sure that they knew the details of what was necessary. Correct. And so that become almost impossible for me to do. And it's a full-time job for the CEO or the C-level to handle that. So uh, handing it off to a professional that has 20-plus years of experience has dealt with so many different situations, handing those situations off with the confidence to know that they're going to be dealt with and risk mitigated is really important. And now I can get you for a fraction of the cost, right? Cause exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> She set me up with that when I was asked. She was smiling as she was saying it. Yeah. She knew that was coming. Exactly. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to go to break. When we come back, you have to bring something from the Google. And I know because you're a big smart head, this is not the Google. You are the Google. You wrote this yourself, I bet you. I have a topic I can't wait to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> Let's take a break. When we come back, we're going <laughs> to dig into your, your article. Great. You are listening to Local Biz Now. If it's Friday morning, say it, Carolyn. Say it. Say it. Your business matters. Yeah. We'll be right back. <laughs> Ooh, it's, it's hot. <laughs> Woo. My ears are burning. <sighs> <sighs> I tell people. You know, we have different co-hosts every month. Okay. And and it takes them some time to get into it, you know. Sure. To, Joe's an acquired <laughs> taste, right? You, you know. Um, and the problem with that system is it, they figure it out at the Just end of the month, the, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. <laughs> Just when you're getting comfortable. The next time you do it, you'll be a whole lot better. <laughs> You can't go in for like a training, you know, right. run. Okay. You know, dry run and then get it. That's right. That's right. That's right. And Chuck, if you would like to be a co host, all you got to do is please Julie. Uh, so okay. <laughs> Julie. I've not met. Say I, her name multiple times. Uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to meeting Everybody Julie. Needs <laughs> Julie. There you go. She has it. We know who holds the keys to the kingdom. <laughs> Oh, Julie just sent a, a an exclusive exclusive book. Carolyn has been wonderful. I want her back. Thank you. You, you have already been plugged, tapped. Oh for, boy! For, for it again. Woo! <laughs> Can't wait. Okay. Hmm. Mr. Isaiah, so we ready to go? I say I've not picked on you all morning. Thank God. I know. Jeez. <laughs> I think I'm saving it for tomorrow. Okay. For the big holiday for the, show. For the holiday show, yeah. Make fun of me for the holiday show. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to pick on you for the holiday show. It might not work. You know. Or you'll have to give it a certain rating. It yeah. won't be PG anymore. <laughs> <laughs> all right, five seconds. Here we go. Oh, that's a lifetime. And we are back. You are listening to Local Biz Now. I am Joe Bagnon. This is News Talk WSIC. 105.9 FM, 100.7 FM, 1400 AM. I am Joe Bagnon. This is the number one talk business show in all of North Carolina. And we thank you for tuning in. Because if it's Friday morning, I'm sipping on a cup of black powder coffee. Because it's delicious. Now let's get this show up and running. Carolyn, you're going to educate us on something today. <laughs> what is that going to be? 
Well, uh, this has implications in HR, but it applies to all small, medium, medium size, and big businesses. And the article is about why responding to all of your online reviews is critical. Oh, interesting. You know, that frustrates a lot of us small business people. Yes. Because it kind of like gives us a, what's the... We are being measured whether we want to be measured or not. With and you those have reviews. no say in it. That's right. Zero. <laughs> but you say. do actually. That's the catch. Oh. So here's here's how here's what ends up happening is that first of all, as a small business, um, especially if you're B two C, let's say, uh, a customer, even if you haven't gone and established your profiles out there where they can find you and rate you, uh, a customer can go out and actually pull up your name and set up a rating for you and so it starts and you may not even know that the google business page that's wrong. even has reviews and so i was helping a customer this uh this week and we looked and they had 777 reviews on google and so even though those are about their products this is happens to be a restaurant right Nonetheless, empl uh, potential employees, so candidates, are going there and looking at what's going on with that restaurant. Well, thank God it was a 4.6, I think, right. rating. And so that's real helpful. But there were no responses to any of the critical messages or any of the positive messages. They probably didn't even know they had a They didn't know. They didn't know. So we're, we've, we're working on a strategy. I'm meeting with them today to talk about what we're going to do. And uh, I didn't know you did this. So, yeah. So this is a little part of what I do. And right. I have an assistant that helps me. She's really great at writing. So we'll make it sound like it's uh, typically the CEO. That's right. And we will respond to every one of them. And the whole point about this article is that you can connect or reconnect with customers that have left Reviews. I mean, essentially, you're 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 doing a mini PR work that's really yes. important for them. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> and, and I got to tell you something. It is so important that you respond to these yes. in a proper way. And most of us small business people, it's you are so angry when you get these. It's personal. It really it, is. Not only is it personal, in my opinion, only. 10% are legitimate complaints that should be addressed. The rest is a bunch of malarkey. But you are going to have to deal with those. You are. And there's a way uh, in which to respond. And first of all, it needs to sound like it's from the company or particularly from the CEO. That's right. So it needs to sound personal on that level without sounding defensive. And by doing so, then... C customers are not dumb. They know. You mean I can't say you crazy? You're oh, not I've, welcome back I've in this restaurant, <laughs> anyways. Any, I don't ever want to see you responses. in again. <laughs> <laughs> I don't recommend that. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe a different tact would be appropriate. <laughs> so it also shows with responding to every review is really about you care about your customers. That's really key. So we want to establish that. And then also, it increases what they call the lifetime customer, the customer's lifetime value. So they see those responses. They're exa they're actually happy that they got a response because they do get a notification, of course. And when I talk about the different, you know, places where you can uh, where reviews uh, sit, Google, of course, but you have Glassdoor because employees can go and rate. You've got all these different sites, and so uh, it really matters by uh, responding to those. And then also. Something Isaiah said earlier is about, you know, responding can also increase the um, presence on the Internet. So SEO, search engine optimization, is a big deal. And with doing so, then your business profile will shoot up when you do a web search. So there's a lot of different, even technical you know, reasons why to do it. I, I'll tell you something. About two months ago, I'm talking with a client. And one of the things we do is to look at their reviews, right? Because buyers are going to look at those because they're going to have to manage that brand, right? You know, whether they whether the sellers like it or not, they're 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 going there. Um, and when I mentioned to this particular client that we had probably ten to fifteen past employees saying something about her mm -hmm. she dismissed all of them as crazy people da, 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 da. the problem is 
she's having a really hard time getting help. Yes. I bet you somebody who's considering going to work for her yes. looks online. And, I, and, I'm, and, and if they heard what I heard, they would not believe the, the past employees, right? Correct. So, But if she doesn't respond, they're only hearing one side of it. It's natural to have that reaction, but you've got to respond. It's in print, and people want to see that there's an active participation on the part of the owner to respond. That's, I can't tell you, you, you hit on a frustrating topic <laughs> here. You know that, don't you? Good, I'm glad. <laughs> okay, so if somebody wanted to reach uh, Carolyn Brand, the Brand, Carolyn Brand Group, how can yes, they do it? Yes, uh, visit our website at the C Brand Group, and then also on LinkedIn, the Carolyn Brand Group. You'll find us there. So let's take a break. When we come back, we're going to uh, talk with a dude who wrote a book. And is going to be able to describe for me how I can communicate with my child <laughs> other than using a Can't hammer. Can't wait. <laughs> That's right. You are listening to Local Biz Now. I am Joe Vagnon. If it's Friday morning, say it, Carolyn, say it. Your business matters. Yeah. We'll be right back. All right. How do you feel about 12 yep. inches and you about 12 inches? All right. Okay. Okay, you're 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 up, Chuck. I'm you're up. up. Let's do this. You've got about four minutes to change your mind. <laughs> Don't make me fill in for you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. How did I do? Did I? Yes, you did. Good for you. Oh, you surprised? Like, you don't think I got skills? Do it again. Oh, you missed. All right, are we in good position here? Yeah. Okay. So you in Seal Creek? I'm in, uh, on south of Aaron Valentine. Oh, Valentine. oh I That's forgot right. to ask Valentine. Carolyn a YouTube question. Exactly. When she comes back, I'm going to ask her. <laughs> Carolyn, when we come back, I'm going to ask you, what is your number one social media tip for entrepreneurs? Ooh. Respond. <laughs> it's going to be respond. <laughs> there you go. Perfect, perfect. And get some help to do so. Carolyn, can you just scoot over this way just off of the end? Sure. Right. Let's right there. <laughs> And when I do that, pull up my YouTube channel so that um, the social media guy will see that. Why are you laughing at me like that? Joe, I don't know if you know this, but, you know, usually when you ask me to pull something up, it's already up there on the screen. <laughs> you know, that's why you don't have any friends and nobody likes you. <laughs> that's right, that's right. I mean, just so you understand that, okay? Okay, sorry. I mean, let me just be clear about that. Joe but, okay, I'll hold off this time to not put it up until you tell me to. Okay? What kind of YouTube channel I don't is want it? Talk, I don't even want to talk to you right now. What kind of YouTube channel is it? All oh. right, settle down. Carolyn, <laughs> 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 settle down, boys. Carolyn, <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to need your help. I might call you a How little something. How can I fire something? somebody that I don't pay? <laughs> <laughs> I'll do it pro. I'll handle it for pro, pro, pro bono. Uh, <laughs> How do I review Isaiah's? Oh I don't know where to go to do that. <laughs> you can start. Yeah, you can start your own review page just on me. <laughs> Give me bad reviews. I'm going to have to start a local biz now page just so I can say, fire Isaiah's. And I'll hire an HR person to respond to every single one of them. <laughs> You know that they have uh, websites out there now where you can rate character of people? A personal. So you could pick on him. I've seen them. And they ask, like, are they friendly? Are they nice to you? All these things. So when, you're co when you have somebody new that shows up, your coworkers checking you out online to see if you've got see, any personal See, let me tell you why that's a bunch of boo -hoo. Because I'm only going to be making fun of you. I'm not going there to say how wonderful she is. <laughs> I mean, I'm only going to go there when I want to just chap Isaiah or something. That's normally how it works. Yeah. 
But I can say some stuff about Isaiah. So. Yeah, and it'll backfire. Go to one of those websites. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to talk about it. I don't want to talk about it. Okay. <laughs> I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> you haven't talked about your scarf on the air yet. Ooh. You know, uh, we had Mike Mooney on years ago, and he said your reputation. What, how did how did he put this? I know Julie will get this. Um, it's. It's not ours. It's it, it's what we earn. Um, I got I got to figure out his quote, but it, essentially, you're not in control of your reputation. Um, really? That it, that, it, that that other people get to decide what that is. That is. So when you when you think that that they're um, taking something or your your yes. um, um, your intention is not what's received. By them. Gosh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to. Get I'd love to, to know the quote. But, but but the point is, your reputation is just simply not yours. It 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 never was. It is always somebody else's. All right, so, we got. So you think there's some privacy? There's not five because it, it's about what other people think. Mm. And we're back. You are listening to Local Biz Now. I am Joe Vagnon. This is the number one talk business show in all of North Carolina. If it's Friday morning, your business matters. And we are here talking with Carolyn Brand, Brand Group HR Reimagine. Now, Carolyn, before we bring on our guests, yes. I am going to go to my sexy YouTube channel. <laughs> I've got 43 <laughs> subscribers. Woo. Which, by the way, the preacher is showing off <laughs> by him telling me how many uh, subscribers he had. He told me he had, let me see how many he said he had. A anyway, he had a bunch. <laughs> he, he had a bunch. He, he just showing off. That's just. He had 44. Just, that, bottom line. <laughs> no, he had like 4,000 or something. I don't know. But anyway. Okay. So I got a YouTube question for you. Yes, Are you sir. ready? I am. Here it is. What is your number one social media tip that you would give an entrepreneur? It's a two-part. Uh, first, go out and search your company and see what you find in terms of reviews because there's a lot of places where people can leave them. And then make sure that you respond to those reviews, Comp the ones that are complimentary and the ones that aren't. And get a he professional help if you need it. But Thank always you. respond. Thank you so much. And you just listened to my first YouTube click. <laughs> what you call that click? Short. It's, it's going to be a short. Yeah. Like a real short idea. Okay, gotcha. Now we're going to introduce our next guest. Our next guest, I read his book and was absolutely uh, impressed with it. Called him and asked him to be on the show. And it's taken me five months to get him here. <laughs> Chuck Cooper. Chuck, thank you so much for being here, buddy. It is great to be with you, Joe. And so the the book, um, Building a Multi-Generational Business on Trust, Respect, and Valuing People, it seemed like a whole bunch of you who. <laughs> matter of fact, I think I read about half of it or skipped through the half of it, sent you an email and said, Chuck, this book is boring. I did. I, I received, you were so respectful to me. I, I responded very quickly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You did. You did. And then I read the rest of the book. Okay. And it was great. Well, thank you. So thank you so much for being here. I really do appreciate it. Um, let's back up a little bit, Chuck. What is it that you do, my friend? Um, kind of fill everybody in on, on your, um, your background. My background is I am a uh, serial recovering entrepreneur. <laughs> I have been involved in ownership of six different businesses over the years. Grew up in a family-owned business in Illinois. And I uh, relocated my family to Charlotte about 23 years ago. And uh, really you're one of those guys. I'm one of those guys. Okay. That's all right. So is everybody in this room. So that's all. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I was tired of the uh, well. What the, the, the uh, short story to that, Joe, is my parents retired and, and moved to Arizona, and my wife and I were visiting them in February. It's 82 degrees on the last day we're there, and sunshine. And I know going back, coming back home, it's going to be zero when we land. <laughs> and I told my wife, I said, we are smarter than this. Mm -hmm. And within a few, about uh, within five months, we had uh, bought a house in Charlotte. So wow. great. it was a great, uh, great move. So I I'm a little confused because there's a, I, I go to the Google, I Google you, right? And there's all manner of stuff about Chuck Cooper. So I see Whitewater Consulting. Right. 
and I'm curious, what is that? Whitewater Consulting is essentially a business consulting practice that specializes in human resources for small and mid-sized companies. So we basically, um, we are essentially a full-service HR department for our clients. But the, the difference we have is the way, the way that our model works is I basically am, it's a hub and spoke system. So I'm basically the hub as a consultant. So I work with my clients to identify the challenges they have. And then I use my amazing network of subject matter experts to be the solution providers to this. So client. instead of me going straight to Carolyn and not knowing if her expertise fits for my business, I can come to you and you'll say, yes, Joe, she can help you with one, two, and three. Correct. Correct. And, and we, look, we look at different models. So you can build an HR team internally if you choose to. You can hire and do kind of a, an outsource or a fractional role. Or in today's world, you can also do uh, the PEO or, and outsource your entire HR department. Okay. So now I read your book. Okay. Okay. Let's ignore the first two chapters because I was falling asleep. I understand. What you did, though, in the first two chapters is remind me how smart you are. Okay. So I'm going to give you credit because <laughs> I'm easy to be bored. Do you understand? I understand. <clears throat> But there is a chapter in here that was really impressive, and I think I told you this, <clears throat> where you talk about the different generations, and you do it in a way that is so um, easy to read and understand. Where did you gather this information from? Because it, it seems as though you were able to ha take life experiences and, and, and put them together. And to your point, there, there has been a lot of life experiences where I, where I captured that information from. But I've also talked to a lot of other um, you know, HR professionals, other entrepreneurs that have had challenges in these areas. And so trying to help them understand how to best communicate and how to overcome some of the challenges they had gave me some really good insight on how to really kind of put this chapter together. And so for me... It's probably the biggest challenge small business people have. I see it and hear it all the time. They cannot connect. They do not know how to talk to each other, right? That is, that is the greatest challenge we have, and it's, it's our greatest challenge today, and it will continue to be our greatest challenge in the year or years ahead. Why is it I didn't, maybe it was happening, but I didn't see it when I was growing up. Was my dad having a hard time talking to me? Was my grandfather having a hard time talking to my dad? I mean, is this common and now I'm just the old one and see it? <laughs> I, th I think the way that we, I think the way the world was, the way society was, you know, t whether it be 20, 30, 40 years ago, was different. Um, I think when you look at the way that we grew up, I mean, there was a track that we were on and it was typically you're going to school, you're, go you're going to college, and you're going to get a job. Um, and you basically, there was a, a level of uh, formality and then maybe a, a level of respect where you basically went in and you worked hard and you listened and you asked questions. Um, today, the generations of people, the, the new generation, younger generation coming in today, they are being very aggressive. They've got a totally different set of skill sets than what we ever had available to us. And, and you know, what, what is also surprising me, I've got about four or five buddies of mine, their kids are a little bit older than, than mine, and they're out of college. And th these are men that have spent their lives building these great businesses. Mm -hmm. Their children want to have nothing mm -hmm. to do with it. It amazes them, right? They want to hand them these businesses, and their children are not motivated by money. Exactly. They're motivated by purpose. So to your, so I, uh, earlier this summer, I was able to speak at Georgetown University, and they had students there from all around the world. And that was the number one question that came up during that conference Chuck, was... my purpose was make money. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, yes, exactly. And, and but to our generation... Work and and the work we did is our is our identity and that was our purpose. Today it's much more. It's about you're looking at how does the work I do, how does that impact my, not only myself and my family, but the community I live in, the environment, the society in general. We so want. so when my friends hear that and they get it because it's staring them in the face, they can't help but say, okay, so how are you going to feed yourself? The, to them. Right. There is this misconnect, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> and and you're suggesting that they're going to do that through purpose. Absolutely. So it's almost backwards. 
Because yeah. first we thought we could make money, and then we're going to go ahead and, and give to charity, right? They want to be part of that charity and hope that it makes them some money. I think the reality, but what I want to stay away from on that, Joe, I want to stay away from painting that generation with a broad brush. Yeah. Because every, every one of us is unique. And so I can look at people in our generation as baby boomers, and we are completely different. Um, so my strengths, I may have, a, a based on my experience and, and education, I may have one set of skill sets, and you may have something completely different. Same thing goes for the younger generation as well. I've heard so many times that that is the entitled generation, that they don't want to work. And the reality is they are definitely willing to work, but they have to have the right reason to go to work. And so they are not focused on money. And yeah, but, but Chuck, I still got to get my product manufactured. I, I, I still have to sell the, these things. Somebody wants that toothpaste. Now, you might not think that the toothpaste is a big enough purpose in your life, but somebody's got to make it because you got to brush your teeth. Absolutely. And so from the leadership perspective, we've got to be able to flip this and be able to understand how we can relate and be able to can uh, really um, be able to connect with their purpose and ha align that with our corporate and our company. So I got to make toothpaste that makes you feel good in the morning. <laughs> now you got a purpose selling toothpaste that makes you feel good. Some of this is messaging, correct? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm picking on you. You know that I am. Uh, Generation Z, what is that? I don't know what that is. Who is that? That is our... Um, is that really my son who's in a senior in high school, I mean college, or is it... Who is that? So that's basically going to be the ones that are in high school right now and okay. early, early college. Okay. So I really haven't experienced much of, of them in my life. Well, it's, that's tomorrow's. Tomorrow's. That's going to be your tomorrow's workers, though. And the reason why I asked that is because you said something that's kind of interesting. They are most likely to not trust corporations that is correct that is really interesting because you're not going to go to work for a corporation you don't trust and I, I wonder as we look at by the time they get into the workforce what is the our, our world of work going to look like because you're still going to continue to have manufacturing but you're also going to continue to have a growth in this gig economy that we're seeing right now yes yes I have a question for you. Sure. Uh, as you look at these generations, are you seeing that they're going into, let's say, the, the Gen Zs, they want to become entrepreneurs? Where, where are these generations typically working? What industries? I mean, you, again, they're looking at where their areas of passion are and what their purpose is, so, and they're right. looking at what the, uh, the mission of organizations are. So mm. they, may, I mean, they may very well align themselves with a manufacturing company, but they have to know, they have to be able to see online as well as from the leadership what that purpose is and what their mission, vision, values are. Mm. You just hit it. You, you stepped right where I wanted to go. you got a section in your book that says how to build a multi-generational, friendly company culture. Now, first of all, when I read this, see, see Carolyn clapped at that. <laughs> I kind of snarled at it like, give me a break, right? But it's real. It is. And you say, mm -hmm. to create a company culture in which each generation needs to meet begins with the CEO or the business owner. That's right, business owner, that's you. Yep. As it must be personal conviction of theirs to be successful as leadership builds the culture, they also establish its mission, vision, and value. And I've never, as a small business owner, hired somebody and had them ask me that question but tomorrow they will, won't they? They absolutely will. And if we don't have an answer for that today, we better sit down this weekend and figure it out. That's right. And, and please hear that, small business owners. Mission, vision, and value is what they're looking for. So when you can't hire somebody, yes. it's because of you. It's not because the economy's bad or they're not out there or they got a check from Uncle Sam, you, you know, and so they got enough money they don't need to work. It's because they don't want to work with you. Am I hearing this correctly? You're exactly right. And what I... Exactly. exactly. <laughs> gotcha, Chuck. So I've got a friend of mine that's in the recruiting business, and he will tell... And he tells me every week, he tells me that you don't have a we-can't-find talent. You have a we-can't-hire you That's problem. right. So that's where the challenge is. It's, it's, and again, these ge younger generations are looking at business owners. They're not only looking at what's on the wall. They're looking at... 
what is how are those people actually living what is out my character? And the Google reviews too. The Googles. Yeah. The Googles. <laughs> Good point. Right. Well, and, and I must tell you something. This is such a major change from when I was growing up. You better work hard for him or you're not going to get a good referral. You know, now it's the exact opposite. The company is either going to get a good or bad referral. Yeah, the ties. Both of you guys are nodding, and it just frustrates sure. the living dickens out of me <laughs> that that's the reality here. Sorry, business owners. We got to change a little bit. That's yeah, really a what lot. it comes down to. Yeah. Well, because because you do understand what's happened here now. Now I have to deal with the customer and the client, deal with the employee and their challenges right at the same time. Right. Yes. All of this is happening at the same time, and they're pulling against each other at times. They are, and the business owner is trying to figure out which which issue is the most important because right. I have to focus on running and maintaining an operation that's going to be profitable. And it's typically the one that costs the problem that costs the most that they're dealing with. Okay, to both you guys. Is there a way that us small business people can discern what the values and the purpose are of the person we're getting ready to talk to? Because don't I want to make sure before I spend time interviewing them that there's a good fit? Because right now I think the problem is I'm not even looking at this. Until I read your book, I, I didn't know that his purpose mattered to my business but it does right because it needs to be a good fit and that's exactly what the, again the younger generation that's exactly what they're looking for they want to know that the work that they're doing has real meaning it's not just for the paycheck but it is for the again for the purpose and and how it affects the community and how it affects um, the world then the environment that they're going to be living in it, 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 if that's true then manufacturing in this company and these menial type jobs, mm -hmm. right, are going to get harder and harder to fill because they're not going to see purpose unless I create meaning and purpose manufacturing That's and doing these menial jobs, which means going on, I'm going to have to totally reorganize how I structure these jobs to add meaning to them. Am I correct you're, on that? Yeah, you're correct. And this, th again, this is just a moment in time where we are right now. All of this is, a lot of this has taken place just since the pandemic. But the reality right. is when you look back over these challenges we're having with people, right. it is all about, it started probably back in 2010, 2011. And you can see on the graph um, th th that there was continuous growth and, and expansion in the challenges that they were having with their employees. So, And what will be interesting is as time goes on, uh, robotics will fill in for these jobs that don't, you know, that we cannot find these workers, artificial intelligence. They're already seeing that years ahead. Wow. And so you end this chapter by saying having a multi-generational workplace um, is, in fact, the opportunity for success. Mm -hmm. I'm going to have to hire and work with people like me, like my son, and like the high school kid, <laughs> all of them with different values and purpose. Correct. And so, I, but you, he wanted to say exactly. Yeah. <laughs> he, I know he wanted to say exactly. Okay. I was so close. <laughs> Yeah, I, you know, it's just that the, the challenge that the business owner has on that is being able to bring the strengths from each of those generations together to carry out the mission of the organization and, and how you go about helping those generations be able to connect and be able to work together. Because that's where we're seeing a lot of disparity within the companies right now is there's a lot of turbulence between the baby boomers and the Gen Z because of the way that they do communicate. Finding ways to be able, for them to be able to connect outside of work is really, really important for them to develop relationships so that you can have an ongoing mentoring program um, over the long term. Ah, interesting. So the company softball team might be coming back strong. <laughs> well, it could be. Am, I, am I interpreting this correctly? She's laughing. It can't be, it can't be softball. What do you want? Basketball? What do you want? What do you want? Any of them. Any of them. <laughs> Climbing? Is there, if they're hanging swimming? out together, I don't care what it is. Okay. That's but but great. I'm saying this... Team, what I would call team, team building yes. is more and more valuable. It Absolutely. Is. Whether you're talking college sports, whether you're college, uh, you know, getting together to do wine tastings, whatever that may be, there's, everybody's got some interest. Being able to find ways for your people to connect around that is really important. 
Interesting. Let's take a break. When we come back, we'll keep digging into the, the book. If somebody wanted to uh, reach you, Chuck, how could they do that? The best way, to, I mean, you can find me on LinkedIn and on all social media platforms. Uh, the other way is on our website, which is whitewaterconsulting.net or chuckcooper.info. Chuckcooper.info. He has written an exceptional book. I, I really like the book a lot. After the first two chapters. <laughs> um, uh, th Chuck, thank you so much for coming in. We, we really do appreciate it. I appreciate the opportunity. And uh, you can get that book on the website that, that he's talking about. Let's take a break and we'll come back. You are listening to Local Biz Now. I am Joe Vagnone. If it's Friday morning, somebody's making fun of Joe. We'll be right back. Is there a topic or something you want to talk about? I think actually we're, you've been we've been hitting on the one the okay. main one. I okay. think it's really important. It's really good. Man, you got some good one in there. You stay out of this. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a client right now where they're fighting over how to use Slack and oh all these different communication all modes, different and yeah. it's just a mess. Mm. Oh, they got virtual employees. Mm. Okay, so I'm going I'm to Chuck. I'm yes. going to ask you a YouTube question. Okay. How about this one? I got plenty. So if you don't like this one, I got others. Okay. Okay. Tips for balancing work and home life. Do you like that one? You didn't. You didn't tickle with that. One. I got another one. I got another one. Do you have a funny business story to tell about your company? A funny business story. Yeah. Oh my goodness, Joe. Either uh, one of those work? Or what about one of the most challenging situations he's dealt with? I don't know if that would, you know, and what came out of it. I got that advice? right here. What is your biggest challenge that you had to overcome in business? You like that one? For me personally? Yeah. yeah. That, that'd be fine. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. That, that, that's what we're going to do. Yeah, and this house, our, our response has got to be how short? It, it don't have to be okay. short. I'm going to turn it into a short. Okay. But I'm learning, the more you can get in on the front end of the question, that's why I'm prepping you in advance. Okay. Smart. Great. I appreciate that. Normally, I don't <laughs> like to prep. <laughs> See, I got a whole nother list of questions here, which is the, the uh, approved random questions. Joe, backup questions. Mm. Oh, goodness. <laughs> um, we don't we have time for that. No, I'm sure not. <laughs> it does go by fast. And then I want to talk a little bit more about how to outsource. Because okay. you two think it's easy. It's not. No. Finding who I need yes. is hard when I don't know what I need. Correct. That mm. was kind of insightful. That, that Very. I just, it, it was, you should have just I made that a YouTube short. I could be a genius. <laughs> You're getting there. I mean, it's possible. You got the G. <laughs> 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 Like I said, they figure it out after the <laughs> Yeah, they Monday. do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this isn't water. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're like Blake on uh, the voice. You got a uh, little vodka or something in there. <laughs> All right, we got five seconds. Here we go. Here we go. Let's do it. And we're back. You are listening to Local Biz Now. I am Joe Vagnone. This is News Talk WSIC. 105.9 FM, 100.7 FM, 1400 AM. I am Joe Vagnone. And this is Local Biz Now, where we hope to inspire, inform, and entertain you for the entire hour. We are speaking with our guest, Chuck Cooper. He has written an exceptional book. Chuck, uh, thank you so much. For coming, we do appreciate it, buddy. Thank you. Um, so, um, I want to ask you a YouTube question. Okay. This is for my sexy new YouTube channel, Isaiah. I need you to plop up the YouTube channel so everybody can see how sexy it is. I have forty-three subscribers. <laughs> Chuck, I'm hoping you can get me to forty-four. You ready? Ready. Here's your question. What is the biggest challenge you have encountered so far in your business career, and how did you overcome it? 
My biggest challenge I had was uh, was actually one of the first businesses that I owned, and that is I let uh, success, pride, and ego get in the way of decision making. Yeah, and welcome I, to my world. Yeah, <laughs> and I, I realized as I went through that um, valley of of uh, life <clears> that being a business owner was not meant to be uh, doing it alone. And that there's real value in having coaches and mentors in your life, both personally and professionally. Yeah. And they will help us grounded when we make these great decisions that we think only us could make, you know. <laughs> and then when something's bad happens, we always want to blame somebody. That wasn't me. That was somebody else. It's, it's, Got it. it. Very true. <laughs> Got it, Chuck. Thank you for that. I, pre I appreciate that. Um, so, Chuck, I, th th there's, a, there's a question I want to ask. It, it, this is Chapter 5 in your book, okay. okay? And it says, how to outsource. And that really connected with me because it, it seems like I never seem to know who I need to help me because I don't really know what my problem is, right? And so you guys are these outsource experts. Help me with this, right? Because most of the time, us small business people – tend to pick the wrong person to help or the wrong time to bring them on board. Mm -hmm. How do I figure this out? And I think that's what I liked about your book and I like about the service you provide. You're going to help with that. Absolutely. And, and I think, as, as I talked about in the book, I think that when it comes to the people side of the business, it's really important as entrepreneurs, we figure that out, kind of what our strategy is going to be on that before we even get early on in the business, ideally before you even launch the business. So I think but once you're in business and you're continuing. That's a pipe dream. You know I'm not thinking about HR but when I start well, my business. You know that. Does. So how many times does a business owner really think about HR? That's right. right. When, they, it, when, when it's in front of me. Exactly. When it's a problem. <laughs> exactly. Right. And the reality is why do we want to look at outsourcing? Because as a business owner, that is not where your strength and your passion is. And that's where I think you, ha you have the opportunity. When you hire your employees, you have the opportunity to carve your business into two. You want to stay focused as a business owner on, on growth, on managing expenses, and mitigating your liability. And let somebody else that's got HR experience and expertise actually handle the people side for you. You know, uh, what I find interesting is most of us small business people, when we started business, we thought we were going to be okay at this. Mm -hmm. Like, I know people. Carolyn, I can read you like a book. No mm -hmm. problem, right? I've got to have some sort of personal skills to even get in business, right? So I'm thinking I got this covered. It's not until, until you, you realize, <laughs> right, 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 I really don't have this covered. And we all find a different time that, 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 that we run into that. I've seen that. One of the reasons I started the company of Whitewater Consulting was because of the fact that I've seen so many times entrepreneurs asking that question of how do I know who to bring in, when to bring them in. And so over the years, I've been really fortunate, Joe, in the fact that I've been able to build this amazing network of, of expertise uh, or subject matter experts to really de uh, deliver on their, their services. So I think that that's one of the values that we're able to bring is the fact we've got this time-tested platform and, and people that we can bring to our clients. And so you don't have to worry about that. We, we know that we're bringing some really good people to our clients. Right. And Joe, you know, there's something really interesting here. So Chuck and I both have experience, enterprise-wide experience, owning businesses. So we, we've sat in all these seats or at least spent time with uh, executives who have. So we're able to see it in a different way. So the, my advice to small business owners is when they reach that point where they really need help, start asking around about business coaches or some kind of coach that has a real good understanding of how to run a business because that's where you can start and they may just recommend somebody else and start there. You know, for, for me, um, years ago, I had mentors um, and there wasn't a lot of coaching going on yeah. back then. Um, and for me, the best thing about this modern business uh, environment, there are plenty of people willing to help um, so you can hand pick, like, call them a coach if you want to, but they end up being able to mentor you and help you. And Chuck, I can see you doing that for a lot of business people because clearly, um, I can just tell you when I, when you read the book, you, you, you are not singly focused 
when you're trying to help your client. I think that's what jumped out at me. Yeah. I, th- I appreciate you saying that, Joe, because that's what my my real hope was, was that they would be able to see that I'm, I absolutely am coming in very, very objective. I need to get to know what's going on within the business before I can even begin to start to make recommendations on what's going to be the right fit for them. You know, uh, one of your chapters talks about compliance, and everybody thinks, oh, I got this, I can do this, and and it reminds me of years ago, I hired this wonderful young woman. She was she was just great, right? And she only wanted to work part time, and because she could walk to work, and I, you know, and I hired her um, about ten cents, twenty cents more than minimum wage at the time. Never thought about her again. She worked with me for nine years. Wow. Well, we never adjusted her pay, hey, how am I? and we end up literally underpaying her under minimum wage yes. because we just she just don't know. remember i had 175 employees i but you know it was just more than i could manage and how horrible i felt that i had allowed this mistake to happen mm-hmm. you, you know in a in a time when i and she knew that i just adored her right you know you know um, but this type of thing, you want to make sure doesn't fall through the cracks. And, and so uh, compliance isn't just about what the government wants and needs. It really is making sure that the entire firm is complying with your interests exactly. and your wishes. Because I would have never wished that. Right. And I think that's a very, very good point. And the fact that we've, it is about making sure your people are protected. As a leader and the owner of the company, you want to make sure that you're carrying out your mission, vision, values, and you do that through the processes and the policies. Yeah, I mean, to this day, you understand that's 35, 40 years ago. It's one of the most disappointing, embarrassing things about what I did running a great company with a great group of people. I hated that I allowed that to happen. Yeah. Uh, it really is one of those moments, and so I say to you, make sure you're trying to prevent or at least put in place you like, for example, we'll put in place to make sure a customer is taken care of. Yes. yes. Why didn't I do that for, for staff members? Because mm-hmm. at the time, I thought I had it. I thought I could do it. You know? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, and I think that's where, again, business owners, they get so busy. And they are yeah. really, really good at, yes. at sales and service and, and operations. But then when it comes to the people side, again, there's so many emotions that can come into play there as well. So taking a step back and having – other people handle that for them is really and Chuck, helpful. the other thing I liked is that you help people with insurance. We I deal. mean, you will advise them in the insurance area, and that is one of the things that, that I, I made me see you as this holistic helper. Yeah, on the on the employee benefit side, we have a lot of great relationships, and I think that's again that that plays a major imp, uh, has a major impact on being able to attract these multi generations to the workforce mm-hmm. because they all have their own specific needs. Right. Okay, Chuck. So we got to go. We've got a minute. I'm going to give you one minute to answer this question. Please, please pick up this book. If you're a small business owner or advise a small business owner, Chuck's book is phenomenal. It is great. Chuck, what advice would you give a small business person that is thinking uh, about starting a small business? I think you want to really spend a lot of time on the front end of your, of developing your business plan, having clear vision of what you want to accomplish in the first 12 to 36 months, and really be very, very crystal clear on your mission, vision, values, and purpose for your company. Thank you, my friend. I appreciate it. You are listening to Local Biz Now. I am Joe Bagno, and we've had a co-host, Carolyn Brand, for the entire month. She is spectacular. <laughs> and we also have Chuck Cooper. Please go get his book. Chuck Cooper is the man. Woo. Whitewater Consulting. If it's Friday morning, your business matters. See you next week.